What's up? This your boy Elite with an episode of Shine On Me. Let's go make somebody famous today. Wait a minute, hold up. Too much on my shoulder. Show what they been told in a situation. I don't fold up. I ain't trying to be up in the street as I get older. A lot of things that happen in my life that make me grow. Trenches, trenches. It's a lot of shit going on right now, man. A lot of shit in motion, you feel me? Yeah, not just me, but people around me and everything that's happening around me. Yo, how's it going? I'm Paul Carroll, local professional boxer. This is my gym, 40 Boxing and Fitness. Come on inside. I'm in a different kind of bag. I'm kind of cocky with it. The way I move around the ring, kind of like Rocky with it. Niggas accidentally telling, accidental witness. What you think I would have did? I would have mind my business. I ain't even in my prime. This something like a snippet. Um, think of 1990 Scotty Pimpin. Just got finished sending more money to penitentiary. Hey, Leak, you never been on a mission, boy. I've been playing. My nigga say he getting transferred for being some. My cousin, baby mama tripping. Let him see his son. Niggas killing in the sense and now they on the run. You do some shit, don't get respect, then you did it for none. Unless you just don't give a fuck and you did it for fun. Y'all trying to play the game. And lose it at all to the judge. I'm trying to play the game and own it just like Warren done. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Shine On Me. I'm with my man Paul right here, man. How you living? What's up, man? How you doing? What's good, man? So, y'all, y'all see, we got the chess boy right here, you know, so we just about to have a, you know, manly one on one conversation. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna get a lot of insight and gems from this interview right here. You know what I'm saying? So, just stay tuned. So, Paul, man, just tell them how long you've been boxing, man. So, I've been boxing like 20 years and like lately, like the last 10 through the pre series. So when did you develop an interest for it? Was it something that just naturally came or was it like... I've been fighting since I was six years old. Oh, man. Is it like cousins? Neighborhood kids, how it started. Is you the only one in your family that's pursued boxing on that type of level? Yeah, we're all fighters for the most part, but I'm the only one. I'm the best one in the family at it, for sure. <laughs> hey, don't let your cousins hit it. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't got nothing. Yeah, they want to challenge you, you know what I'm saying? I know growing up, like me and my cousins, like we fought all the time, especially with my older cousins. They just go in the room, we just, you know, go at it, rumbling, and, you know what I'm saying? They had people in there crying and all the type of stuff. Before. But hey, that made us better fighters in the end of the day. So, how long you plan on doing this? Man, I'm freaking 37 now. Hopefully, I can keep fighting until I'm 40. We'll find out, though. I got three kids and whatnot. It's getting kind of tough. Do you feel like that was. That slowed you down, that slowing down your career, just having kids, or you feel like life in whole? Life in general is hard as shit, you know what I mean? Having kids adds an extra mixing to it, man. So, like, where you grew up? Like, where you from? So, mainly from Columbia, South Carolina. I grew up a little bit in Florida as well, but uh, mainly, you know, Columbia, South Carolina, boy. Yeah. You was in Florida. You was amateur boxing, right? Not pro yet? Yeah, exactly. Do you remember your first amateur fight? Yes. Do you remember your opponent, how it went, your mindset going into that fight, like preparation for it? Do you remember the whole? Super, super like confident going into it, and then like five minutes beforehand, super scared, super fucking nervous, super fucking anxious, and when the bell rings, like, even now, like the first round that I'm out there, like, it's very, I'm very anxious, right? Like, it's like I, I've always had like bad anxiety, right? And I deal with the anxiety by like putting myself in situations that like, you have to fucking deal with it, you know? Right. And uh, I just managed to land a good, a good early right hand. And the, the kid I was fighting was like some dude that had been working in his garage with his dad, hitting bits and shit, never been in a fight before. So I had, I had an easy win, but it was still like super nervous, you know? Yeah, you had that advantage. Well, <laughs> yeah. I was even watching um, Rocky, you know, I, that's one of my favorite sagas just because of the emotion that's involved. You know what I'm saying? My dad introduced me to that saga when I was young, because, you know, they started making Rocky before I was even born. And he said, he said, I'm pretty much feel like every fighter gets scared. At some point, it don't matter if you feel like you're dealing with it, it's just the nervousness that comes across you. You know, yeah, any fighter that says they ain't scared going down there fucking lying through the team, they all scared in some way. It, hey, it's, it's part of the game. You yeah. gotta have that game face on. They say you gotta have that game face on. You gotta look like the hardest, the toughest, you know what I'm saying? But then when you go, on, you a monster, you know you a monster, and you going up against another monster. You know what I'm saying? You don't have the slightest bit of nervousness, something wrong. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I mean, human beings been doing battle with each other for 50,000 fucking years. Like, fighting each other is what we do, you know? It's like a thing that comes naturally to people, but like having the skills to do it in a fucking ring is different stuff. So, did you know your opponent before that match? Like, no. did you know he just worked with his pop in the garage? Yeah, just, and all, like, did you know that about him? No, I had just seen him like hitting mitts earlier before the fight started. And, oh, like, you got uh, confidence. It just looked like he hadn't done any real sparring before. Yeah. And like, uh, that's all. Like, the, the guy that owned the gym that I learned that, like, that's uh, an older dude, old pro, pro boxer that was pretty punch drunk and kind of like 
let everybody have the run of the gym. So I had a lot of sparring experience, but like I said, I fucking smoked and drank and fucking the Florida life, you know? So how long you had for gym here? So I've had about three years now. Three years? Yeah. We got about like 50, 60 people that come here, all different ages, types and whatnot, training kids and whatnot. That's the one thing about it, like being a coach, I never thought I would like, enjoy the coaching part of it, but it's cool watching people like, you know, get healthy, get fit, and actually like, learn how to fight. So, so do, you, do you feel like out of everybody at your gym, is it a good percentage you feel like can really make a, a genuine career out of this? And I would say like- Honestly. Hey, one percent of people have a small shot of making some money. Like it's like the hardest job in the world. You know how it is. Like every dude out there thinks they can fight, and like point oh one percent actually can in the end, right? Yeah. When I first started boxing, like uh, everyone told me I couldn't, and like uh, I boxed in my late teens and early twenties, just doing amateur and whatnot. But uh, I lived in Florida at the time, and I didn't take it very seriously. Like I smoked cigarettes and drank beer. Florida. Yeah, and like I won a lot of fights just trying to land the right hand, but I never took it seriously enough to beat any good fighters. And I took like a, you know, five or six year break, and then uh, I had my first son at like 29, and uh, I figured I better live my life in a way that like he could be proud of. And at the time, I was a mechanic, like a car mechanic. Yeah. And that's a good job or whatever. I like doing it, but it didn't like uh, make me happy to get up and go do it. Yeah, and I'd that, always lived my life. That wasn't your passion. No, it wasn't my passion. And, like, because I was a little kid, I always wanted to go out in front of a crowd and get my hand raised in a fight. Like, uh, there's a lot of things in life that's like it's worth more than money. And like, go, for me, going out there and winning a fight and getting my hand raised, it's worth more to me than anything. And like, uh, showing my kids that they can go out there, despite the entire world telling you that you can't do it because you're too old or whatever the hell is going on, that with enough work and determination, you definitely can. Like, everyone told me that like I couldn't be a pro boxer, I couldn't get any wins, I couldn't get paid to do it, that the gym wouldn't work that all this shit wouldn't work, and every single time I kept doing it and the gym worked, I could fight pro, I did win a fight, I did get paid five grand in LA. Yeah. And it's just like, all those times, everybody was so sure that what I was doing wasn't gonna fucking work. And then like, as each thing started to work out, everybody had to eat humble fucking pie over this shit. <laughs> and it like, it's your own family usually that's like your biggest fucking haters, like. Oh no, that's a fact. You know, <laughs> like, if they want you to do good, but never better, I want you to do good, but never better. Never better, that. right? And yeah. it's like when I started, the gym started to work, and like I didn't have to work a regular job anymore. It was like people were hating on me because they still had to go do their regular fucking job, but nobody was there watching me work. Like I worked ten hours a day as a mechanic, and then like I get up at work and I would work on fucking getting the gym, and so like I was putting in like fourteen hours a day, yeah, and like nobody grind. sees that shit. You never see that grind. Not ever. And then like I got through. I got at the time I had two kids at the time when I opened the gym up. It's like. You know, I'm in my fucking 30s, I got a family, a wife, and kids, and I'm still working on my dreams. And like, I, every fucking day I was tired. I didn't want to fucking get up and work on this shit. Every single fucking day. And all the motherfuckers telling me I couldn't fucking do it. And all of them can get fucking fucked now. But, <laughs> nah, cause I know you dedicated, I even see you with your kids in the gym. Right? Yeah, when I mean, you see come my kids all the fucking time. In here. You even tell them, hey, babe, you work with them. Mm -hmm. you, you work with them, then send them to play in the playroom. And then you come back to grinding, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'm trying to, like, I'm thinking about it, like, I had a shit fucking childhood, and, like, my parents weren't the best. They weren't the worst either, but, like, uh, no one was ever there to explain to me, to, like, how to be a man, how to follow your dreams. It's kind of, they kind of left me to my own devices. You know, I got running with the wrong crowd a couple of times, but uh, thankfully I fucking got pulled out of it. And now I have, like, I've got great friends, great family that supports me for the most part, but... Uh, for the most part, boxing in general, like when that bell rings, you're on your own. And like a lot of times in life, no matter what family you got and you can have good parents or whatever, ultimately you're on your own. If you want your dreams and goals fulfilled, like you gotta do it yourself. No one's gonna do that shit for you. Nah, that's real right there. That was, you dropped a lot of gems just now. You hit on a lot of stuff just now, you know. And I basically heard you mention a lot of trials and tribulations and obstacles. Basically letting everybody know this went easy right here. Yeah, my life has been fucking hard, like real fucking hard. You feel like the way you grew up contributed to you even forget boxing, just fighting in general. You just feel like you just had so much anger built up from the way things been going and not having that support or just the people you was around or not having the, support, the, the family around you or guidance to really how you want to do to pursue you to even take a fighting career because it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous job to really want to do this for a living. Yeah, I look back at my life. I mean, I can remember all the way back when I was like four or five years old, like my first neighborhood fights and like, uh, you know, winning my first one and like, you know, being a little guy, like, you know, I'm not very big. I'm only like five foot seven, 125 pounds now. And so like when you're a little kid, 
know, kids are cruel and they always bully the little guy, you know? So it's either like, I'll learn to fight and defend myself and get these fuckers off me, or I'll get my ass whooped and cower in a corner, you know? And I look at all these things that have happened to me and it's like, uh, like destiny in a way, but it's like destiny mixed with work. Like if I wouldn't have worked hard enough, my destiny never would have been fulfilled. And like, I've still got a lot of shit I gotta do still. And a lot of like work to do, but at least I understand where I'm going now, you know? And like, I'm grateful to fucking God that everything that happened, happened. Even the shit parts of my life were like pieces of a math problem that had to be in there to get whatever solution is at the end, you know? What do you feel like is something that keeps fighters from getting great? Mad, I, mad, rather it got to do with discipline, like, do you think it's discipline? It's self-discipline. That's the number one factor in people never making it. Whether it be boxing or their whole life, everyone, generally, almost everybody's got an excuse as to why they can't do something or they're too tired or whatnot. Like, in boxing especially, there's plenty of days where, like, I'm too tired to come to the gym or I'm sick or I don't want to come, and those are the days that I fucking make sure that I come. It's like, if I can come on the days I don't want to come, when it's nice and sunny out, of course I'm going to come, right? But I've seen it time and time again. People join the gym, they have that like, you know, I'm getting some, something new, I wanna do this, and they come in for a couple of days, but they figure out this shit's fucking hard, and it takes years to be a good fighter, and like, if you wanna put in years of time, no. So they end up watching that. So do you feel like, rather you even take it serious, the person that got the most discipline, even if you got talent, or you got the urge to do it, the person that got the discipline to do it, it'll be, um, ultimately end up being better anyway. For sure, I've got like tons of talented kids coming here, like, and like, Nobody that's talented has come in here and been able to fight good off the top. But I've had plenty of kids that come in and they're like uh, not coordinated at all, but they put the work in and like after a year they can finally fight and like none of the talented kids can ever be any of the kids have been working for a year. Like work always beats talent every single fucking time. Now that's the thing right there. Work always beats talent. Every single fucking time. Work beats talent. So do you feel like do you feel like you know a lot of boxes that you know they had discipline and then got lazy after they got like a couple wins once they actually got their career started and it's kind of warm in career. Do you feel like that's a thing? Yeah, life happens to people. But I understand like, uh, you know, people kind of do stuff in ways, you know, and like, box is a hard thing. Like, to actually do it as a job, you know, you don't really get paid a lot of money to start with, right? Where it's like you're working for free for the most part. And like, uh, the actual, you know, the job of boxing, whether it be amateur or professional, it's a dangerous job. People die every year for it, right? So it's not something that can be taken lightly as a game. But like in the gym and whatnot, with little kids, it's just good to teach them self defense and whatnot, and just give them some amount of like you know what it takes to have you know real fight skills. Yeah. And that's something people don't talk about a lot. Like it's like the bills, you know, trauma, brain injury, that type of stuff. Yeah. The brain injury stuff is real. Like, it's one of the only gyms that like I try to take care of the kids and make sure they don't end up like uh, you know you know messing their brain up for a long term. So that's something that you would check me, bro. Oh man, he got no chick. I'm, I'm getting so, I'm getting so lost in the cop dog on Come on in the old man's hey. gym. That's all right. Ain't nobody ever beats me at this shit, no way. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey! Don't think I'm just this sweet with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just so caught in the conversation. I'm just, I'm just talking and moving. I was right? talking and moving too. <laughs> I'm oh, talking about. <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. You got the, you got the answer. Nah, I had to try. Good. You got some of my pieces anyway. Nah, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? But on in the series, no way. Have you ever had people take you to your gym? Maybe was going to that next level that suffered any type of injury or something like that. Just you know, doing too much or not doing the proper sparring, or not taking care of yourself, or going all out. And I've been lucky so far. I've had uh, you know a couple of guys get get hurt, but they've been all right in like a week or two but nothing serious, like, you, I mean, you know how I run the gym, I'm pretty sharp about, like, keeping an eye on things, but, you know, it, it'll happen eventually, I'm sure somebody will get knocked the fuck out of here, but, you know, it is what it is, that's why I got good waivers. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, have you ever suffered an injury, like, your whole, all the yeah. years of you boxing, have you suffered an injury, where you, where you really thought about, like, man, I might need to stop doing this? Mm, like, my first pro loss, I got my nose broke, and it just took me a couple months to, like, get over this fact that, like, you know, I'm going to have to get back out there and find it if I want it, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's the worst one I had, broken us so far. Tell me what that felt like. After your first loss from a pro and then you were in it with a broken nose, you got people around you, you know, probably got friends talking trash, uh, people looking at you. Like, how, you, how did you feel right immediately after loss? Ah, uh, it just... It, it sucks, like, the broken nose doesn't really bother me that much. It's just like, you know, losing them at the time, I was like undefeated, and you, like, you lose your O, 
and like uh, at the time, like when you got a broken nose, you can't breathe and shit. So at night, I couldn't even like go to sleep because it kept waking me up, you know. And like for the next two days, like I kept having like uh, like blood pouring out of my nose. If I do something, hit a bag or whatever, like blood pouring out of my nose. So I'm like walking around like tissue paper jammed up in the shit. It's tough, right? Like, okay, tell me what that recovery was like. That was like, you know what? I'm about to go harder the next fight. I, I want to keep fighting forever. I don't care about the loss. I, I don't care about the broken nose. It's time to turn up. Like, I want to do this. I just kept getting up and grinding. Like, it took about two weeks for my nose to finally heal where I could, like, work out without a bleeding. And uh, at the time, I didn't have the gym yet. I was working for another gym. And uh, I had to get up and go to work. And it's kind of like I'm still punching a bag and holding this for everybody. So it's like either I fucking got up and did it or I fucking didn't, you know? So, the owner of that gym, was he your trainer? Yeah, originally, yeah. So, how was his training? Like, was he, was he the one to train you for that first amateur fight that introduced you to that amateur boxing world? Yeah, yeah. So, he was, uh, just t- t- taught me basic boxing. And like I said, he was an older dude in his 60s at the time. And like, uh, you know, just taught me the basic footwork, the basic hand position, just full guard. And like, uh, I was just good about landing an overhand right. And like, that was my only mission in my early early boxing career, just trying to land an overhand right, finish the fight before I ran out of gas, because yeah. I fucking smoke cigarettes. Yeah, too. that was a signature move. I could hit <laughs> yeah. him with that overhand right. It still right. is. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, so did you uh, talk to the opponent afterwards? Like, did you, did you feel like, honestly, do you have sportsmanship? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, anybody that's got the balls to go out there, I don't give a shit who it is. Like, you got the balls to step in that ring where it's amateur professional. You got more balls than 99% of the general public. Like, you know how it is, like, all your boys and whatnot. Every single dude out there thinks they can fight when they're down. I don't care how, like, pacifist they think they are. They all think they're down if a fight breaks out. You know, you have to be in the gym. Most people can't fight at all, you know. Even, like, really talented guys, they can't fight in a real ring, you know. So I have super respect for everybody. I once had a pro fight. I broke the dude's jaw beginning of the second round. That dude finished the round. I ended up having to finish him with a body shot. I didn't recognize it because I, I fought without my glasses, so I can't see detail on his face. Yeah. I walked over to congratulate him. His fucking mouth was hanging open with a broken jaw. And like, it was tough as shit. And like, he deserves props for that. You know? Yeah. Fighting with a broken jaw is tough as shit. Right. So, but do you, do you feel like you have that same mindset when you lose? Like, when you got your nose broke, was it sportsmanship or you was like, I hate this dude? Like, oh, sportsmanship. I ain't worried about it. it ain't his fault. It's, you know, I'm too old now to care about that kind of shit. So. Yeah, you see some people, they like, oh, my God. Man, yeah. I, mean, I, I ain't lose, or I ain't, I don't care, or, or, or you can't beat me outside the ring. Yeah, you know, some people just take it to another level, or just they can't embrace the L. Yeah, that's another thing about like fighting you know, up, coming to truth with yourself. Like, if they can't, you don't have truth about yourself, then like if you get beat, you know, turn around the other guy, and really it's mostly you. You know, most of the problems in life are just you anyway, whether in the ring or outside the ring. Uh, All right, man, down to the nitty gritty, man. So. What does an average day look for you like in the gym, like, as soon as you come into the gym? So, I usually I drop my kids off at school, come in the gym, usually light the fire and whatnot, we try to get warm. I usually like uh, stretch out and do yoga, so like I'm you know, in my 30s now, so like if I don't stretch and do yoga and whatnot, like I'll get injured real freaking quick. So get stretched out, do a little jump rope, a little hand-eye coordination drill. And generally people kind of like, they come and go, and I work miss with them, spar with them and whatnot, and as the day goes on, I try to get at least like two workouts in a day. It just depends on, some days are like strength and conditioning days, some days are cardio days. Okay. And yeah. Do you have like a, a calendar? Like, do you keep track of this or is it just like whatever you feel like that day? All in my head, all what I feel like that day. And like, I gotta like, being 37, so like I can't like overdo it, but at the same time, I gotta keep keep trying to stay hard, you know what I mean? So I try to push, add a little bit every single, every single week on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing 12 reps one week, I'm trying to do 14 the next week. Just trying to add to it, you know? Okay. So what's what's one of the things you feel like you work on the most? Rather it's power, speed, stamina, endurance. Sparring, like I spar, I probably spar more than any human being on the planet. But like I don't go to war sparring all the time, and a lot of times it's with most of my students and whatnot. But like just different things work on different people. Like I practice my southpaw style, an orthodox style, trying to land the overhand, trying to land straight left from southpaw. Like generally, like with boxing, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to beat another human being in the ring, right? So like all the drill work and the footwork drill is all very important, but at the end of the day, like what am I trying to get good at? Yeah. Fight another human being in the ring, right? So I spend most of my time on sparring and like working on different like attack patterns and seeing what works and like people don't really understand like you can have like you get three minutes in the ring when you're a pro, right? And like I can set up a long term game plan where like I spend two minutes just jabbing and backing up, jabbing and backing up, jabbing and backing up. And like I, that teaches that guy that I'm just jabbing and backing up so he'll step in more. So in the end of that two minutes, when I decide I want to stop doing that, I'll jab, but I won't back up. I'll jab and I'll step in with an overhand, try to end the fight like that. It's just like 
there's a thousand different things you can do in the ring. And like I said, different things work on different people. So it's like every day I'm trying to add tools to my toolbox. So that way when I go in that ring, I got a thousand fucking tools to choose from. That way if one tool doesn't work, I can go back in my fucking box, pick one tool that may work on that guy, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like when most new people, when they come in, or anybody for that matter, everybody, like most people focus on offense? Like they just focus in just going crazy? For sure. They almost never have any head to it. You especially get like guys that have punching bags at the house. Instead they'll hit a punching bag for a couple of months before they come in here. And what happens is like they're hitting a punching bag and they don't realize this, but they're not moving their head. So they teach themselves to punch without moving their head. So when they get in the ring and sparring, they realize they're hitting a moving target, and like, I don't even hit them for the most part. I mean, you remember your first day, like, yeah. I don't even try to hit you, but it's like, you try to hit a moving target, it's totally fucking different, you know? And like, I can boop them on top of the head or boop them to the body, and generally, like, I, you know, I beat most new guys with just my defense so they get tired, you know? Yeah. So, so you feel like it start with the practice? They practice wrong before they even talking about getting serious or trying to be better, they practice wrong. They, yeah. Their foundation is messed up. Mm-hmm. It's like it's that same thing where like every single dude thinks they're down when a fight breaks out, so they all think they can fight already or have certain things that they do. And like 99 times out of 100, the footwork is always messed up. And like that's some very footwork, footwork heavy here, right? If your footwork's not right, your punches won't be right. How you move in the ring won't be right. And so usually you got, you know, dudes in their 20s or whatever that's been in a couple street fights. And especially if they win a street fight, they really think they got the goods. Yeah. And then it's like I have to undo all of that. You know, it takes a couple months to undo all those bad habits if they want to put the fucking work in. And they said that's for everything. They said if you develop a bad habit, it takes months and months to undo it. And then you got to relearn it. And yeah. then you got to get good at it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's like a whole year, two, three years just putting in work. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Undoing something, you know, because they even said like it's hard to undo 10 years of bad habit in a month. You know, you learn a lot, you know what I'm saying? You learn how to, you know, but it's still a little rough because you done spent 10 years doing something one week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so. the thing in the ring too, like if you're getting pressed and you're tired, like, you know, when you get a little bit of skills, being good when you're not tired is easy, but can you be good and technical when you're tired? And like usually when someone has got bad habits, whenever they get tired in the ring, they start doing those bad habits again and they forget the fundamentals I've been teaching them. So it's kind of like a exercise and like repetition, like, you know, years and years of repeating those same things so they can finally do it right when they're not even thinking about it. So at the end of your workout, you didn't did your workout. What does that look like with your very last workout? So usually like I, I work until like six o'clock and like between like 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. is the busiest time. And like I'm usually helping little kids, fundamentals, sparring with the older guys. And like, uh, you know, I keep the gym open 24 seven. You get the key code or whatever. So usually like when I leave, there's somebody still here working out. And I just go home, bring any dinner with my family, man. So you pretty much work out three plus hours every day. It looks like, it looks like five hours a day. Five hours, <laughs> five hours. Yeah. Five days a week. Yeah, so it's like for, ye- for years. I'm the only employee here, so it's like <laughs> I like I've been doing that for a long time now. My wife thinks it's funny. She's like, I'm tired when I come home at night, but it's like I'm working out five hours a day. And it's like it's hard too, you know. Yeah, hey, I know it's better when she got some food ready for you when you come <laughs> home. Shit, I cook. Right? She's been working, so I've been cooking so lately. You, you still I go, go home? <laughs> work? I go oh, home and fucking man. work. Yeah. <laughs> That shit never fucking stops. I pretty much got used to the fact that my life is work and my life is pain, bro. <laughs> hey, man. But it's crazy, though, because it's your passion, so it don't feel yeah. like... It's not it's, nearly as bad. It's so, a hard like, job. Like, even my, my, bad, my worst day here is still better than my best day as a mechanic, for sure. And, like, I, lately, like, as I retire, like, I'm, I'll box on 40 probably, but, like, watching, like, little kids... And like dudes like yourself, like you finally got kind of good. The last time I saw you, were like you learned to calm down and spar. It's like it's good to see somebody like they get it a little bit, yeah. and they start to learn like oh shit, it's about being calm. You know, being a real good fighter is about being calm under pressure, and it's not about like you know being angry or mad because that should get you killed. Because a real fighter, so yeah. it's like it's fulfilling for me to like watch somebody that's like completely helpless out there start to get a little bit of hands and realize oh shit, I can fight a little bit. Yeah. And like whatever I teach you or the kids, like you can take that shit with you the rest of your life. So if I get killed in a car accident or killed in the ring or whatever. I know whatever I call y'all is still out there and should live forever. Hopefully, anyway. And it can get passed on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now, you, now it's your legacy. It's like, hey, look, my, son, my trainer was Paul. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he taught me a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff I'm teaching y'all, he taught me. And I've been implementing that. And that's what y'all doing. And now y'all agree. You know yeah, I think that shit spreads out, you know? Yeah, I think that's a great way to, to lay the foundation for other people. Like, the new generation, everybody generation that's coming up that under you that you gave some type of influence to. Live on forever. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I got a lot of respect for that. You know what I'm so, uh, you haven't started your workout today, have you? Well, I did yoga before you got here. Okay, so yoga, what's next on the list? 
the jump rope, and then a little hand-eye coordination drill I do in the ring, okay. like juggling and whatnot. Okay, so let's work out then. Let's, let's do it. Let's kiss. Jonathan, about to get some boxing with boy Paul. They get some work in, get better every day. You know, nothing new. It's your one and your wheezy, man, this shit too easy. Different bitch for every season, showing me they cleavage. I take drugs and feel relaxed, it's like they therapeutic. She take that piss, I don't call back, so she won't think I need it. Made it out of jungle, my ball ain't got no jumper. Rest in peace, my uncle, never met, but I still love you. Remember that piss from way back, playing I pay on the popper. Stayed in the hood where the killers at, made my pillow chopper. Hey, so that'll be this episode of Let It Shine. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all come to Fluidity Box here. If y'all want to put some work in, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Paul for putting the work in. Thanks for having you know me, saying? Bro. Opening up this gym, giving everybody a chance to come in and get training from a professional boxer. Appreciate the interview. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you around, man. Yes, sir, man. Thanks for it. Let's shine. Later. I thought that I was playing when I told them that I'm back again. Got to pull my purses out to learn how to relax again. Every kid around the world, they think you got to rap the win. You ever had a feeling? It should make you think you had a chance. Since I can't remember, I've been feeling like I had to win. Thinking about the shit that I went through, it got me mad again.